Hi, I'm Robin and I'm disabled. Oh my god, did you just say you're disabled? Yeah. I totally don't see you as being disabled. It's all about the mindset, right? And I think you have the right one. Now at school, man, it's just part of who I am. I think you have a ton of ability. I think you might be differently abled. Seriously, mate. I'm just disabled. It's, it's fine, really. Thanks. Hi, hello! My name's Roman Lambert, I'm 19 years old and I have cerebral palsy, but you guys know me as the T-Rex, and you're watching my T-Rex life. Okay guys, today I want to talk about why I personally choose identity first language when it comes to disability, and where I see the importance in this. Now for those of you that don't know, identity first language is basically when you say a disabled person, rather than person first language, where you say a person living with a disability, or a person with a disability. Now, the idea of person first language, identity first language, how to identify as a disabled person is something that I have gone backwards and forwards on over the last couple of years. Now, if you look at my channel, you'll see videos where I'm talking about person first language and where I'm talking about completely rebranding disability and calling it something else more positive. And that's the awesome thing about opinions, is that they can change and evolve the more you learn and the more you experience. So I hope this channel continues to document the ever-evolving being that is Robin Lambert. But like I said, today I want to talk to you about the reasons that I have finally settled on identity first language and why I think this is important. Now, the importance and the concept of identity first language was really brought to my attention by the social media campaign, hashtag say the word, created by prominent disability advocate Lawrence Cardalong. And this whole campaign was created to change perceptions around the word disabled and disability and to show people that they do not need to be fearful of this word. Now, we know historically it can be taken that the word disabled has a negative origin. You know, it's Latin for deprived of capability. But again, like opinions, the awesome thing about language is that it can evolve and it's ever changing and you can give new meaning to words and in that comes power. And I think that's what's happening with the word disabled and disability right now. And in fact, it's not something that's just happening right now. It's not even something that's new. We've been changing how we see disability since the 1970s when the disability rights movement began. It was during that time that we looked at disability and said, you know what? We're not actually always disabled by our physical impairments or our, you know, lack of physical ability. We're actually predominantly disabled by a world that is not accessible to us. We're disabled by social barriers, physical barriers, attitudes and discrimination. Now one of the main reasons that I'm against saying a person with a disability is because we don't say a person with womanness or a person with blackness or a person experiencing gayness or living with gayness because we understand how entwined those things are with who a person is and the importance that they hold as an identity. And I think this is the same with disability. Especially having a congenital disability myself, there never has been and never will be a Robin without disability, without cerebral palsy. And having a disability since birth has really shaped who I am today and the experiences that I've had because of my disability have really helped create the perception that I have of the world and the opportunities that I've had because of it have really, you know, built me up to be the person that I am today. So it's not just something that I'm living with. It's an intrinsic part of my identity and it's a really important part of who I am. Lawrence Carter Long says, if you see the person and not the disability, you're only seeing half the picture. And that is something that I fully, truly believe in. I think for you to be able to understand me as a person and my role in this world and how I see this world and my attitudes, you've really got to be able to understand my disability and to like me, you've really got to be able to like my disability. 
Which is something that Ben Matlin said in his article for the New York Times recently, A Disabled Life Worth Living. He said, you know, he, he began to realise that in order to truly like himself, he had to like his disability. And again, that is so true. I have become so much more confident and so much more comfortable within who I am and I know so much more about myself now that I begin, began to explore my disabled identity and I began to invest in that. Another reason that I don't like saying a person with a disability is because again, we don't say that about other identities. And I think we do say it about disability because it's seen as something that we should distance ourselves from or we should erase or try and hide. And that's because I think the general perception still is that disability is inherently negative and almost abnormal. And there's the also, also the argument of personhood and giving a person with a disability dignity by saying they're a person before their disability. And I think that if you need to be reminded of a disabled person's personhood and the fact that they are also a human being and not just their disability, then you need to change the way that you perceive disabled people. I don't need to change the way that I identify. And again, I think this distancing ourselves from disability by saying a person with a disability, or you know, this erasure of how it's an intrinsic part of our identity, really glosses over a number of things. Both our struggles and our challenges, but not just that. Also our history, our culture, and the way that we are discriminated against. And I think by calling ourselves disabled people, we're really going to be able to unite as a minority. And we're going to be able to show people that, you know what, accessibility doesn't just benefit disabled people. If you think about just physical accessibility, things like drop curbs, elevators, self-opening doors, yeah, they benefit people in wheelchairs, but guess who they also benefit? The elderly population, mothers with prams, people with trolleys and suitcases, not just disabled people. And again, not even on a level of accessibility, human diversity is important. People having different identities, different perceptions and different opinions is important. It goes a long way in creating a dynamic and progressive society that is empathetic of people's struggles and understanding of people's differences. So why should we be trying to see a person without an important part of their disability, without an important part of their identity, or just dismissing it as a small difference? And lastly, the main problem that I have with person-first language and the debate for that is it's mainly driven by able-bodied people. Now, if you're disabled and you believe in person-first language, I will 100% respect your preference because I'm sure you have valid reasons for that um, that I may have either not realised or may not be essential to me. But what I do have a problem is this conversation being led by able-bodied peers because they are uncomfortable with the word disability and it makes them awkward. Because in that case, they need to change how they perceive disability and they need to stop thinking of it in such a negative light that they can't even bear to say the word or call someone what they are. For me, saying that I am a disabled person is something of pride. For me, it's about taking ownership back of my own body and my identity. It's being able to say, yes, I am disabled and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But where there is something wrong is a world that is not accessible to everyone. Where there is a problem is when I am discriminated against because of my physical condition. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with the way that I was born and having cerebral palsy. So anyway guys, if you have a disability, if you're disabled, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the identity first versus person first debate. What are your preferences and why is that the case? But most importantly guys, remember to stay shiny because I love you.